And Dr. Tom, I know we're pushing time here, but one final thing I think we have to get into to full circle this conversation on on the brain, and that is the blood-brain barrier. We've talked about leaky gut, but something similar can happen in the brain. So I think we need to get into that and talk about what's causing that and is there a relationship between that and, and leaky gut? You bet. Um, the markers of a leaky gut, the uh, technical names are zonulin, actin, myosin. They are the same markers that make up the boundary of the blood-brain barrier. So the boundary of the tube of your intestines is made, made up of zonulin, actin, myosin, other components. But when you're testing for leaky gut, you're looking for antibodies to zonulin, actin, myosin. When you have elevated antibodies to zonulin, actin, myosin, the antibodies are in your bloodstream. They're going everywhere. You know, you did a blood draw, they're in your blood. And when they go everywhere, they're attacking zonulin, actin, myosin, wherever they find it in the blood. So when the blood goes past the brain, if you have elevated antibodies to zonulin, actin, myosin, they're attacking the blood-brain barrier. So if you, have, if you are positive for intestinal permeability, the leaky gut, you likely are positive for leaky brain. I call it, it's called a breach of the blood-brain barrier. That's the technical term for it, a breach. So I call it B4, capital B, number four. You got B4. Well, what do I do? The same thing you do for the leaky gut. It's exactly the same protocol. You got to reduce the antibodies. How do you do that? By your environmental triggers that created the abnormal microbiome that calms down the inflammation, that stops the intestinal permeability. So these molecules get into the bloodstream and then they travel everywhere and they attack wherever they see their target. It's the same treatment protocol as a component of treating a brain. Just go on Google and type in depression and inflammation and you will see so many studies or anxiety and inflammation or schizophrenia and inflammation. You will see so many studies that when you reduce inflammation in the body, you reduce depression, you reduce anxiety, you reverse schizophrenia when you put them on a gluten-free diet. Not every time, but often enough that there are many papers on this. So when you understand that these boundaries, see, Professor Fasano is the director of mucosal immunology. The mucosa is the lining, the lining of your gut, the lining of your brain, the lining of your lungs. That's why they've dialed this down, is because they've done 20 plus years of research at Harvard on this. And this is cutting edge stuff. You know, um, I, I start many of my talks for doctors with the slides from the British Medical Journal that say the average, not the exception, but the average is 17 years from when translational research is first published before the doctor down the street is using this information in his practice. 17 years. And when you read Fasano's work, you see that he's been talking about this. Well, I think when he first talked about the pillars, uh, he started with three pillars uh, in 2004, 2005, and then there was the fourth pillar and then the fifth pillar. So it's gonna be a decade before most doctors are familiar with these concepts because they don't have time to read all this research that's coming out, but this just makes sense. You know, when you read it, it just makes sense. Stop throwing gasoline on the fire. Well, what does that mean? You have to find out what's causing inflammation in your body. What are the environmental triggers causing the inflammation? 